Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Energy bills to soar even higher as homes face regular blackouts Orphans of the EU meltdown Leaving EU biggest threat to Scots farmers Governments weaken EU tobacco curbs to secure agreement Plus ministers to seize back 100 powers from Brussels I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, millions of households face paying hundreds of pounds more for their energy bills as Britain's gas and electricity reserves hit a critical low, experts warned last night. The country could also be plunged into regular blackouts in just two years as power stations close and investment in new plants is held off. Families already struggling to pay their bills could see their electricity bills soar by 20% by the end of next year as reliance on foreign gas grows. It means the average household's electricity bill, currently around £570, could rocket by another £114 to £684 by the end of next year. Experts say the average household dual fuel bill, currently 1400 could shoot up to £2,000 in the next five years, forcing many into fuel poverty. Now, viewers and readers will be and indeed should be concerned by this story as the article is predicting energy rises of 50% over the next five years. As part of our forward strategy here at the unit, we are already investigating the energy industry and looking for ways, legislation and opportunity. Watch this space and we'll keep you posted. Laughing children play in a pine-scented courtyard on a warm summer's evening. Excitement rises to fever pitch as a creamy chocolate gatto is sliced. It appears a timeless, idyllic scene, but in reality it is a very modern Greek tragedy. For this cloistered red brick building in the wealthy suburb of Athens is a children's home, yet many of those youngsters are not orphans or the products of dysfunctional families. Instead, they are forgotten victims of the Eurozone crisis, handed over by parents who can no longer afford to feed them. The financial meltdown in Greece has caused pain and suffering throughout the country, but in a nation where the idea of family is central to everyday life, its youngest citizens are bearing some of the heaviest burdens of the crisis. Being deadly serious now, it's this kind of repercussion that sickens me to the stomach and makes me so angry. Furthermore, it is what we have been saying all along. Let's face the reality here. The Euro elite kleptocrats are feeding their own hopes and dreams of a federal Europe with our babies. Yes, that's a strong statement, but can you demonstrate to those families who have lost their children that the price they are paying to fund the losses of the reckless banksters is a fair and reasonable one? The biggest threat to Scotland's farmers and crofters is UK government plans to hold a referendum on EU membership, said Scots Farm Minister Richard Lockheed. Refuting claims from anti-independence campaigners that food and farming businesses would be damaged if Scotland went it alone, Mr Lockheed said the biggest threat was the UK government's proposed EU membership referendum in 2017. David Cameron's in-out referendum threatens to deny our food and drink industry easy access to Europe's 500 million citizens and 20 million businesses, said Mr Lockheed at the Royal Highland Show in Edinburgh. Not only that, there is real concern in many sectors, in particular the whisky industry, that being outside of Europe will mean losing the backing of the EU's trade negotiations with countries like India, the US and China. Leaving the EU would result in funding drying up overnight, without any replacement for direct support payments from the UK government, he claimed. Alright, 30 second analysis. There is no evidence to support your claims, Mr Lockheed. Indeed, your position seems wholly inaccurate, according to most economists. Ah, but I see where your intent really lies. It is in the final statement, leaving the EU would see funding drying up overnight. 
So what you're saying is that a truly independent Scotland is unviable without EU subsidies and support. <laughs> a quick search on Wikipedia reveals another of your empty promises that you are powerless to fulfil. In 2007, you promised a system that works with and not around fishermen, and one where fishermen and fishing communities have a genuine voice in decision making. How did you ever think you were going to be able to deliver on that statement when all the power and control is held in Brussels through the common fisheries policy? Mr Lockheed, you are doing your people a disservice. European Union health ministers agreed on Friday to ease tough planned restrictions on tobacco products to overcome opposition from some governments to the draft rules. The ministers rejected a ban on slim cigarettes proposed by the bloc's executive, the European Commission, but said they should be sold in normal size packets to reduce their appeal. They also agreed to outlaw menthol cigarettes and other tobacco flavourings. The bloc's health commissioner said that, despite the need for compromise in order to reach an agreement, the spirit of the commission's original proposals has been retained. The main thrust is that tobacco should look like tobacco, not like perfume or candy, and that it should taste like tobacco as well. In the first part of efforts to renegotiate Britain's relationship with the European Union, ministers will announce plans to claw back the powers. Theresa May, the Home Secretary, will give MPs details of proposals to opt out of 133 EU measures covering justice, home affairs and the police, including the controversial European arrest warrant by next spring. Some of the measures that are seen to be in the national interest will then be opted back into in a complex process, but more than two-thirds will disappear permanently from British law, the Sunday Telegraph has learned. The move follows last week's unanimous Commons vote in favour of moves to hold an in-out referendum on Britain's membership of the EU by 2017. We shall be investigating exactly which powers this repatriation will consider and shall be looking into making a comparison of these in an upcoming episode of Eurocon, where we will compare these apparently repatriated powers against the acquis communautaire, which is the EU's massive book of rules. Today in our video library... Perhaps a small wry smile from me today, as my arch-nemesis, Microsoft, has been hauled over the European Union's rack and drawn for 731 million euros. The EU has concerns over Microsoft's manipulation of the European PC market, and in particular its anti-competitive tactics used to lock consumers into the Windows operating system. Google interview with Jeremy Allison Jeremy heads up the open source Samba team and has documented and discussed many times the commercial and technical tactics that Microsoft uses to exploit the consumer market and lock out competition. Personally, I support a diverse computing marketplace as this fosters research and development and this is an example of how the EU should be operating as an economic community, protecting consumers and catalyzing trade. I'm Rick Timmis. Reporting for the unit Nightly News, I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter... Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence.
Simply join our community. The unit on Google+, links to the community page, are below.